All right, so we are finding limits algebraically. We're in case uh, three, where we have a zero over zero limit. Uh, we have uh, our third example, and let's identify it uh, as being a zero over zero limit. So if we plug four in, we get a fourth minus a fourth in the numerator, which is zero, and four minus four in the denominator, which is zero. So what are we going to do in this case? Well, the first thing that we want to do is to get a common denominator in the numerator. So we're going to get a common denominator in the numerator, which is going to be the product of these two denominators, x and 4, or 4x. So let's set up the problem that way. So we've got the 4x, and let's um, make note that we put a dot right here to identify the main fraction line. Everything above that dot is the numerator. Uh, this original 1 right, right here is going to turn into a 4 and this original one right here is going to turn into an x. The minus sign between them is going to remain. We need to look at uh, what we have um, uh, algebraically to resolve the fraction into a little bit nicer form. So let's recognize our fraction as being of the form a over b over c, which we will rewrite as a over b times 1 over c or a over bc. So we want to look at our fraction or rewrite our fraction into this structure. Uh, so rewriting our fraction into the a over bc structure, notice that we have just what we want or almost just what we want. We can remove the x minus 4 by pairing it with the 4 minus x canceling those two to get a minus one in the numerator and then we're going to pick up what we have as a case one limit on the next slide. So it's a case one limit. We can just plug in uh, the x value four because we no longer have a zero in the denominator and we get minus one over four times four or a result of minus one over sixteen and so we want to characterize this third type as so we want to characterize the third type as getting a common denominator when we have a complex fraction as we did in this case our original problem was a complex fraction and we got a common denominator in its numerator okay so we've looked at three cases we want to in the next slide look at a final case of zero over zero limits.